Hey, Hawaiian Jeff here from the Jersey Shore. There's a few things about Actuate Bert that I want to show you. To start, you need an Actuate Burt project. Simply go File, New, Actuate Burt Project, give it a name, and then add to it one or more reports. You can choose a template. I'm just going to use a blank. Here we're presented with a blank page. Next step, let's define some data. We go to our Data Explorer, right click on Data Sources, New Data Source, I'm going to utilize some sample data that's been installed with the installation, leaving the name as data source. That's under Derby. It already knows the location of the database. Next, we define a data set utilizing that data source. I'm going to choose the table out of classic models. I'll use products and I'm going to choose product line, product name, quantity in stock, buy price, and MSRP. In the data set editor we can add computed columns, parameters, filters, and other settings. We can also preview that data to make sure we've grabbed the right fields. I now have a data set that I can work with. To create a simple listing report all we need to do is drag that data set onto the report and it automatically builds a table. Not very pretty, but functional. Let's give this some pizzazz. Go to our palette. I'm going to drag a grid onto the blank page. I'm just going to do one column with, let's say, five rows. I can then grab my table and drag that into the grid. And what the grid is, is a placeholder, a way to have cells and rows on the page to allow you to organize the content. Let's add some formatting to our table. First, what I want to do is group by products. And we'll delete the detail row field for product line. I'll make this bold. Let's also throw in an aggregation here. We'll call it product count. That'll be an integer. We'll do a count of our product names. Let's bold that also. Next, let's give some formatting to our numbers. So we have quantity and stock. That's just a general number. We have our buy price. And I'll hold down the control key and select the MSRP. And within the format number under properties, I'm going to choose currency and use the thousand separator. You can also go back to general and make those right aligned. Now we don't need all this space, so I'll simply drag my columns within the table over and give more room to our product name. Let's see what that looks like looking much better. Let's put a chart on here. Now before I add the chart from the palette, I want to make sure that my table is named. I'm going to call this products. And what that will allow me to do is utilize that table as a data set for my chart. Within here I'm going to say use the glassy style. I like this particular theme. Click Next. And here's where we get to choose our data. I'm going to use data from our report item products, which is the table. So I'll drag to my x-axis the product grouping, and let's use product count on our y. Click Next, and we can format. Here I'm just going to turn off the legend, and that's about all that I want to do with this. I'm going to size it to fit the page. And let's take a look. Very nice. Now what that linking did was allow us to utilize interactivity to modify the table and update the chart as we do that modification. So here I'm going to sort my product line in the opposite order. And if you notice, the chart changed its order also. 
another thing that I can do is say I want to filter my quantity in stock to those that are less than 1,000. And notice how my chart updates, not just with the scale, but also with the number of columns. Let's finish up this report with a nice image at the top. I'm going to do an embedded image, but I have other options. And holding down the Shift key, I can drag this over and maintain perspective or ratio on the image. And there we have our first report with a interactive chart and a group table. Have questions, need some assistance with Actuate BERT, hit me up at one of these locations.